All right, good morning, everybody. We are back. Stella Diaz never gives up. We got three chapters today because they were kind of short. Not a lot of action in these three chapters, though. Uh, a lot of sort of concern about the oceans, which is important. Stella's kind of have a little trouble with Jenny now. Not trouble, trouble, but it's something on the horizon. Only two Spanish words in all the three chapters. Unbelievable. So they are le using the Spanish words less and less, I have noticed. But uh, we're going to keep looking them up. And so there's always going to be questions down here, right below me. There's going to be some things to look up. There's a few less questions this time. There's a few more things maybe to do or to look up. There's going to be a few videos, as always. Um, if you look on my page here, you'll see that there is a a card game uh, that I added yesterday, so a little math if you want to do some of that. I might have another one to add today, but I need a partner for that one, and both of my partners are still sleeping. <clears throat> Chapter 13. Mom picks me up at the end of the first day. She looks overwhelmed and is carrying a leather bag with her. Overwhelmed. That's a big one. That means that she just does so much work to do and so many things to think about that she's just, it's making her a little stressed out and crazy. That's overwhelmed. How did the primer dia go the first day? She asks, taking off her high heels. She replaces them with ballet flats. Amazing, I say. I went on a behind-the-scenes, ultra-exclusive tour. The back area looks so scientific with pipes and computers, it looks like a submarine. I also think I may have one new friend who also wants to save the oceans. Now, hang on a second, I've got to make a note here. So, something to look up for later. Mom gives me a high five. See, the star works, she says. That's right, I forgot about the star on the hand. What's in the leather bag, I ask. Ugh, Mom softly moans. I have to do work from home. That's how I can pick you up early every day this week. When we get back home, I immediately call Jenny. I want to tell her all about my first day of camp and see if she wants to help me save the oceans. Jenny, I'm on a mission. Meet me at the library. On my way, she replies. Good start. I jump on my bike and ride to the library. When I see Jenny, I give her a big hug and hand her her gift. It's a colorful bag from Mexico that I filled with Japanese peanuts. Ah, oh, that's one that you got on the plane. For at least five minutes, I ramble on about my trip. I haven't been able to tell her much since she was so busy at dance camp. And I ate grasshoppers, I conclude. Jenny just shrugs. Eh, I ate duck, egg, duck eggs today, she replies. Her mom likes to buy pickled duck eggs from the Vietnamese market. We both laugh. Even though it was just a few days, I miss Jenny. It's so great to have a best friend who understands that sometimes the food doesn't sound food that doesn't sound familiar actually tastes the best. She then tells me about her camp and does a dance demonstration. I try my best to seem interested, but I really just want to get started on saving the oceans. All right, so I think we had a little of this last time in the uh, Stella Diaz book. She gets a little self-centered, maybe. Thinking all about herself, you know, Jenny's just as excited about dance camp as Stella is about um, marine biology camp. As soon as she finishes, I tell her our mission. In Mexico, I decided I'm going to be a marine biologist to protect the oceans, and I need your help. How are we going to protect them, she asks. I pause. That's a good question. All right, so I haven't figured out all the details. I just know the sea creatures need our help, and I thought we could do some research to figure out how to help them. Jenny looks a little more convinced. I'll help when I'm not at dance camp or rehearsing. I have to practice a lot for my duet at the recital. That's coming up soon. My stomach sinks a little. The oceans are more important than dancing. I wish Jenny understood that. I can't complain, though. A little help is better than nothing. Stella thinks the oceans are more important than dancing, right? Jenny does not feel that way right now, <clears throat> and that's all right. Where do we start? She stands on her tippy toes like a ballerina. We begin by consulting our faithful friend, the library catalog. It's easy to find some books on the ocean on the computer, and we skim through the section a little bit. It's mostly books that I've seen before, as you can imagine. I know the area quite well. Jenny says, this is great stuff about oceans, but we need some tips on how to save them. As much as I'd like to disagree, Jenny is right. Let's ask the librarian, I say as I stand up. We find the librarian at the information desk. Jenny rings the bell to get his attention. It startles him for a second. How can I help you, young ladies? I speak up pretending to be confident. I'm Stella, and this is my friend Jenny. And we'd like to save the oceans, and we need help doing research. 
What go-getters, he says. Follow me this way. He takes us over to the computers in the kids section. I'd recommend searching for oceans, but also conservation. Of course, we learned about conservation last year, I reply enthusiastically. Reduce, reuse, recycle, adds Jenny. I nod. I learned about it in Ms. Bell's class. The three R's are all about conservation. Conservation is about preserving and protecting natural resources. Recycling is making sure reusable materials are not thrown in the trash. Instead, the materials can be recycled and turned into something new. But what does that have to do with the oceans, I ask? Sadly, replies the librarian, a lot of the trash we create ends up in the ocean. Oh, we reply, I never realized that before. I was so focused on protecting sea creatures from people, like building a fence around turtle nests, that I didn't realize we're hurting them from far away, too. Like polluting their homes with our trash? The librarian finds us a list of books in the catalog that matches both conservation and oceans. With our arms full of books, we leave the library. It's more than enough to begin. At the last minute, Jenny grabs a book on baking for kids. It just looks too tasty, she says. Did I miss any pictures? Nope, just this one picture here of the blue whale. Biggest, biggest mammal in the world, right? Oh, it's not even the end of the chapter. Pardon me. Back at home, we start on posters. Jenny writes out in bubble letters, Save the oceans, while I draw a mighty blue whale underneath. It's the largest mammal or animal to have ever existed on the entire planet. It's a symbol worthy of the cause. That's true. Then I start writing facts on a separate poster. Like how there are 150 million metric tons of plastic in all of the oceans, if an elephant weighs one ton, then that's like 150 million elephants of trash. <laughs> Imagine that. The more I write and read, the worse I feel about what we're doing to the oceans. I think learning about conservation might go hand in hand with feeling a little bad. Hmm, maybe. After we finish making the posters, I feel less upset. But like usual, I want to do more. I lie down on my thinking rib. Hmm. All the facts are sad, Jenny, I say, frowning. I really hope I can figure out how to fix the oceans. A snack might make you smarter, Jenny says, looking at the baking book. She's been flipping through the pages as I worked on the posters. We head to the kitchen and brainstorm over some galletas from the pantry. I don't know if it really made us feel smarter, but the cookies sure improved our spirits. Look at that. Three options. Chapter 14. The second day of camp, Mr. Kyle and Ms. Susan introduce us, introduce us to one of our big projects. At first, the project is sort of a mystery. It's best if we explain it in the penguin habitat, says Ms. Susan. We all squeal together as a group. In the habitat, we are not allowed to pet the penguins. It's still great, though. This is the closest I've ever been to a penguin. I'm within arm's length of cuddling one. Kristen leans into me. It smells sort of fishy in here. I nod, but I don't really mind. Their little waddles and personalities are so funny, I can ignore the smell. Mr. Kyle holds up a rubber ball and throws it at the penguins. They have so much fun pushing it around to each other, almost like Biscuit with his toys. Today, you are going to make toys for the animals, similar to the ball I just threw. They're called enrichment toys. The toys help the animals exercise their minds and bodies. Awesome, I reply to Mario. If I'm not a zoologist, I definitely want to be a designer. I try to smile at her. I'm determined to make her my friend, but she turns her head again before she can see me. Hmm. Follow us. It's inspiration time, says Miss Susan. They take us to the official enrichment room. It's where they store all the toys that the belugas, otters, sea lions, and dolphins play with. The toys come in all varieties. There are frisbees, balls, hula hoops, and even ice cubes and a cooler. I pick up a plastic figure. It looks sort of like a skeleton. That's the sea lion's favorite toy at Halloween, said Miss Susan, grinning. After we examine the enrichment toys, Mr. Kyle says, As you design, imagine how the animals might engage their senses with the toy. Think about how the animals could play with your toy in their groups. We get to work in the big craft room. The craft room is like our own personal art supply store. It has all the supplies you can imagine. Now, before you get to work, says Miss Susan, we'd like for you to get into groups of threes. Kristen and I naturally team up. We even ate lunch together yesterday. When we look around, it seems as if everyone has formed their groups, everyone except Mario. Mario, would you want to be part of our group, says Kristen. Mario shrugs her shoulders. 
The three of us sit down at the table. We are a little silent as we sketch out our ideas. I keep biting my lip trying to figure out what to say to Mariel. The thing is, I just don't know where to begin. I know that she's been to Florida, but I had never been there, so I don't know what to ask her about. I've also never been snorkeling, so I can't talk about that. I even think about using a conversation starter. Remember she talked about those a few chapters back? Thankfully, Logan breaks the silence by asking Mr. Kyle a question. Here they are working, and it does not look like Mariel is too thrilled with being there, does she? Stella, of course, looks very happy. Here's some penguins, too. I forgot about these guys. Mm, over in the middle. Logan breaks the silence by asking Mr. Kyle a question. How did the animals end up here? Wouldn't they rather be in the oceans? Mr. Kyle sighs. You're right, but many of these animals are rescues. They were injured from fishing nets or tied up in plastic. The, qu the aquarium is a sanctuary for them. A safe place that is not quite their home, but at least protects them from harm. Since their habitats are smaller than their natural surroundings, they aren't able to do everything they would do regularly. For example, they're not able to hunt for their own food or explore, and because of that, the animals can get a little restless or bored. By making these toys for them, you're improving their quality of life. I frown a little. I still love the aquarium because I can see the animals firsthand, but at the same time, I feel sad for the animals. They're living far away from where they were born. I know how bad it feels when you feel like you don't belong. I want to make the ocean safe for all sea creatures so they never have to leave. Unfortunately, this plastic problem is huge. I need to figure out a way to fix this. All right, last chapter. Chapter 15. It's another short one. When I get back home from camp, I immediately call Jenny. I want to see if she wants to make more posters. Her mom answers instead. Hi, Stelly. Jen Stelly. Hi, Stella. Jenny is busy. She is rehearsing for her recital. I frown. Oh, okay, I reply. Can you tell her I call? It's a little upsetting. I know Jenny cares less about saving the oceans than I do. She spent most of our last session reading the baking book from the library. It made me a little mad. Mmm, trouble. But she's also busy, and it's okay if we have differences. Ah, that's good. At least that's what I tell myself. Part of being a crusader is being flexible to obstacles. I have to be adaptable just like the tuna fish. Not only are they the only warm-blooded fish, they can raise their body temperature to adjust to colder water to stay warm. Oh, pretty good. Mom's busy working, so I decide excuse me, next to look for Nick in his room for help. Unfortunately, it's empty. Then I remember he's at the pizza shop. He's working extra all week because I'm at camp. With no one to help out, I decide to read more about how we are polluting the oceans. The information is sad again. For instance, I read that sea turtles often confuse plastic bags with sea jellies that they like to eat, so they end up eating the plastic bags by accident. I picture the baby sea turtles I just saw at the beach in Mexico. My heart breaks. Poor little guys. The worst part is I read that even if everyone recycles, we're still using more and more plastic, much more than we can recycle. Plastic is even showing up on islands in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, where people don't even live, and the animals there are suffering from it. While I read this de depressing information, Linda comes over. Mom promised her dinner since she took care of Pancho during our trip to Mexico. Linda sits on her favorite chair and knits as Mom cooks. She watches me push my books aside and curl up into a ball. Well, I've never seen you rea react to a book like this, she exclaims. Only my grandson Joey reacts like this, but he doesn't like to read. Yet. Part of me wants to smile, but I can't. What's the matter, Stella? It's the oceans. They're dying. I flop over dramatically on my back. Oh, she says, dropping her knitting, knitting needles. Is it really that bad? I look up at her face. She looks sincere. Biscuit runs onto the top of my stomach. He sits down and nuzzles his face against mine. It's almost as if he knew I needed a friend. Linda slowly gets off the chair and sits closer to me. But you know what is amazing? I shake my head no. It's amazing that you care that much. I shrug. I know that doesn't sound helpful right now, but I know you're going to make a difference. And if you can get more people to help, you'll make a bigger change. And look, here's Linda. Linda is actually older than I thought that she was, and there's Biscuit right on Stella's tummy. Trying to make her feel better. I sit up on my elbows. She has a point. 
Why don't you write Stanley an email? I'm sure your mom won't mind just one more. And after, maybe you can make a whole list of questions to ask your camp counselors tomorrow. Ah, they might be a good resource. I sit all the way up. Biscuit barks almost as if he's motivating me. I get mom to turn on the computer. Linda knits nearby as I write an email to Stanley. Dear Stanley, I am super bummed. Saving the oceans is hard. It turned out, turns out there is so much plastic and it's only getting worse. I don't know what to do. I've made some posters. Jenny helps some, but she's so busy with dance camp that I'm sort of on my own. Your sad friend, Stella. I draw a sad drawing of me in my sketchbook. I put teardrops all around me and some dead fish at my feet. Oh, gross. After looking at it, I decide not to ask mom to help me send the drawing with the email. That would be too dramatic. Instead, I only put a few sad emojis at the end. After sending, I start making a list of things to ask my camp counselors. They've got to be able to help me. My biggest question is, how do we stop using so much plastic? All right, and that's the end of chapter 15. So it does look like she's getting a little frustrated with her friendship with Jenny. I wonder what's going to happen. And I wonder what's going to happen with Mariel. If they're going to sort of find a connection and something that they have in common, then she and her new friend Kate and Mariel can be the new friends. Be interesting. See you all tomorrow. Don't forget, there's questions down here. I would love to hear from you guys. Go outside and play. See you tomorrow.